I've just come off an interview with, with a bookkeeper from Canada. Her name's Kim, Kim Lafayette. And it was extraordinary when she told her story of, of where she started with hourly rates and, and then her journey with value pricing. And recently, some of the numbers that she's been getting for bookkeeping uh, are, are staggering in terms of the prices compared to what she would have done. They're absolutely staggering. Uh, and so I don't want to tell you the numbers now because she's going to share those with her, but you're going to get so many great gems in this in interview. So grab a pen and paper and come and join me and let's hear what Kim has to say. So Kim, thank you so much for, for coming on and letting me understand a bit more about your story because I know you're doing some amazing things uh, and we're going to get into what you've done, the results you're getting and so on. But first, just to set the scene, just for people watching, could you just uh, say a little bit about you, your background, how long you've been in business, where you're based, what sort of work you do? Yeah, for sure. I mean, and thanks for this opportunity to chat with you. I'm really looking forward to this conversation we're going to have. But a little bit about me and my business. I'm located in southern Ontario in Niagara region, otherwise known as wine region for in Ontario. There's a lot of wineries around here, so people really like that. I've had my business for about seven and a half years, and I focus uh, strictly really on the bookkeeping, the sales tax filings, the payroll tax filings. I don't do any T1s or T2s, which here in Canada, those are our income tax forms. I work with a network of accountants that do that part for me. So I really focus on being involved with my clients more on the day-to-day -day stuff. And when I started my business, I was really challenged by, um, I had been working as a bookkeeper for a company and they were changing all of their staff to subcontractors and they dictated what my opening rate was going to be. They said, oh, we're going to pay you $25 an hour to do, instead of the salary that you've been on. And that sort of, when I opened my business to be a subcontractor to them, that was my rate that got grandfathered into everybody. I had no network. I didn't know anybody. And of course, then I met you and heard about you and got into your program the first time and started working on things and it's been a joy ride ever since i got very busy very fast had a problem of needing to hire staff but the rate i was charging wasn't allowing me to do that i also was never getting resistance from my clients i i didn't immediately start value pricing but based on your teachings i did start charging more Every time I quoted a client, I increased my hourly rate by $5 an hour and was never getting resistance. Everybody was always saying yes. And um, so getting resistance was one of my goals. I'll talk about that a bit more in a few minutes in our conversation when I talk about how you helped me achieve that. Awesome. I, I would love to. Uh, and I just nothing to do with pricing whatsoever. But when you mentioned where you're from, Niagara, and it's, uh, it's wine, you have something quite unique there. It's, um, is it iced wine or frozen wine? Yes, absolutely. Because of the temperatures and that we have a full four seasons here, in the winter they do make ice wine from the frozen grapes. Yes. So a lot of wineries in other areas of the world don't have that option. Yes. When Sarah and I were, were there the first time, we went to Niagara and, uh, and we went to a, a, a winery that was ice. I'd never heard of it. And it was really, really nice. <laughs> Lovely stuff. <laughs> Excellent. Did you get a little flushed in your cheeks when you were drinking it? <laughs> oh, I always do with wine, yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful part of the world. Uh, although we went to Niagara Falls and the visibility was zero, it was a really, really misty, cloudy day. It wasn't the best of yeah. days. Um, but anyway, so, uh, uh, so thanks for that kind of introduction. Uh, before we kind of get into what you did and the results, when you, when you kind of think back to when you, you started on the pricing, I know you said you grandfathered that rate. What were some of the challenges and the frustrations, difficulties you were having with, with pricing? So the challenge 
of course, what the pricing was that I had allowed that former client to dictate what my price was going to be. And it's very difficult then to change that. Um, anybody that's making changes to their pricing will quickly learn that it's, it's challenging to increase somebody that's been getting such a great value price from us for so long. And now all of a sudden you want to start charging what you're actually worth. Um, at the time, I chose to just do the increases with new clients. I didn't reprice any existing clients. I did always stick to your teachings about increasing my prices annually. Um, so I was very much on top of doing that. But obviously, those annual increases, the percentage isn't as high as as an increase that I would charge to a new client. So that was a big challenge. And because my rate was as low as it was, um, I was busy. I, I had a lot of clients coming to me through referrals. Um, the accountant from that first client started sending more business my way. And I was also working on site still at the time. And I was one person. So I was really limited to that physical time in a client's office. And I wasn't saying no to anybody. I didn't have a niche. I was spreading myself really thin and not making very much money as a result of it. And even when I did start getting staff, by the time I paid them and my expenses, there wasn't a whole lot left over for the quality of life that I like to live. I was surviving and paying my bills, but I wasn't going on vacations. I wasn't, you know, buying the nice car that I like to drive. Like I wasn't living life to the quality that I would have liked to. Oh, I lost sound for you. No, that's that's entirely my nope. fault. So sorry, Kim. I do. I, You're I, back. <laughs> I, I do crazy things sometimes and press buttons which I shouldn't press. Just leave the buttons alone, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just I was just saying that uh, I can relate to that because when I was running my accounting firm in in ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight, uh, I had the same problem. I, I just felt like uh, after a while, I just felt like I was working crazy hard, crazy hours just to just to pay everybody else that was working for me. It was it was it was ridic ridiculous. Uh, when I, exactly. when I look, look back, yeah, what we do, what we do to ourselves, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah. So, so Kim, what were some of the things you started doing? What did you, what was your journey like? What did you start implementing? So, uh, like I said, I've been open seven and a half years. My journey actually started fairly quickly. I think it was my second year in business that I met you um, at a conference in Toronto. And you were doing, uh, you were obviously speaking, but you were also doing um, lunch and learn sessions where we could just sit down with you and ask you anything and have a conversation yeah. with you. So that's what we met. I have a picture about it. And um, so that was my early learnings. And I joined the Value Pricing Academy the first time very early on, but I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't attending the sessions. I was so busy. I wasn't attending the sessions. I wasn't doing homework. I wasn't watching the recordings afterwards. So I wasn't doing anything. Um, and so I quit the program and I carried on with my hourly billing. And I thought, you know, I'm increasing my rates gradually each time I get a new client. So things are getting a little better. Um, fast forward to uh, the very early days of COVID, like even before the lockdowns and everything started, uh, my niche market was the travel industry. And I very quickly lost about 90% of my clients because they went out of business. And I joined, it was a big investment for me at the time because obviously I had lost a, a substantial amount of revenue, but I joined the Bookkeepers Pricing Academy. And, um, and then as soon as Value Pricing Academy enrollment opened, I transitioned over and, and I made a commitment to myself to, I think I've attended probably 95% of the sessions live. I do the homework. I do the workbooks. I created a value pricing academy study group, as you know, with your permission. And those people hold me accountable. They're all always so thankful for our meetings and discussions. And I'm like, hey, I'm thankful for you guys because you're holding me accountable because I'm not going to come to you every meeting and be like, oh, guys, I didn't do the homework oh, guys, I didn't do the homework again. So that accountability was key for me. Effective pricing, wow, mind-blowing software. I still don't think I know it. As, I'm still not maximizing all of its uses, but Mark's 
some I've used it three times and honestly, <laughs> sorry, I get excited. The so these are my first times value pricing people now instead of doing hourly. The very first time I used it, I would have quoted this person forty two hundred dollars a year for the services um, that they provide or that I provide to them. Using effective pricing, they chose my premium package and their annual price was over eighteen thousand. So that was huge. And that just got me, of course, really pumped up. And I, I should mention for effective pricing, I really put myself on the line out there. I posted in your group that I wanted to do a role play and I was inviting everybody to attend the role play to critique me before I met with my clients. And that, that turned into a four hour role play session with people giving me tips and suggestions. And I was so nervous to put myself out there to everybody, but wow, did I ever feel more comfortable when it was finished. It was amazing. Uh, the second time I used the software, my increase was almost 200%. I think it was about 194% or something. And then the third time that I used it, the increased price that I would have quoted was over $22,000. And that's not even really the biggest part of that quote. The biggest part was that it was an increase of over 30,000 of what their previous bookkeeper was charging them. So the results that I've been getting with the software has been so significant for my business and confidence, everything. I mean, it just, I get pumped up talking about it. <laughs> I can kind of tell from the uh, the facial expressions and the uh, yeah. I'm just uh, Sorry. I'm kind of I'm just kind of speechless. The result they are extraordinary results that that, that you're getting and uh, in a short space of time as well. The uh, and there's so many things that you were saying there that I thought was really really interesting and some some great uh, learning points for other people. The fact that you you joined the academy, you didn't really take that much action, which sometimes happens, you left and then decide, look, this, and then nothing changed. And then this time taking action. And, uh, and I know that it was great when you decided to set up a study group, which I know other people get huge value from. And, and yes, I know you turn up to all the sessions pretty much, which is great. Uh, and, and, and you know, you know, I talk about this thing about, are you an action taker or a note taker? And clearly this time around, you're an action taker, just doing stuff, doing stuff. But those results are extraordinary. Did you so with the software? Obviously, it's, a, it's for some. Sometimes people find it a strange process. Sat down with a client with a piece of software, going through the price. How, how did it feel the first couple of times you used the software-based approach to pricing? <laughs> it was incredibly nerve-wracking. I went through the software myself several times because obviously I had done a discovery, a paid diagnostic beforehand. I had had, I do do two meetings with the client before we get to the value pricing. So I knew quite a bit about their business already. And prior to showing the software to the client, I went through it myself several times and said, if they answer this question this way, what is the price gonna be? I didn't wanna have any surprises at the end when I revealed my price. So I took it probably two or three hours and went through the software several times just doing practice quotes what happens in this scenario what happens in that scenario and when i was comfortable with the price that i was getting at the end every time i felt better and i actually felt a lot more confident going into that meeting with that first person very very impressive that you you've done the homework and, and tested things out so when you when you did that process in front of the client, what sort of reaction did you get from the clients in the first few meetings? What, or, or in all the meetings, what, what reaction do you get to that way of pricing? So far, those three clients have all felt that I was very professional compared to other accounting people that they've worked with in the past. My, my, and they didn't comment specifically on the software, but they just said my entire onboarding process, how I really took the time to talk to them, my value conversation with them. Of course, they don't know that's what we call it, but they just had never had anybody take the time to really ask them, you know, those questions about what's keeping them up at night or what their goals are. They've always just worked with people that 
did the books and that's really all there was to it so it really made me stand out as more of a professional which is why I think everybody keeps agreeing to my premium package and more on that but um, yeah they just they the whole process they thought was really good they loved that I could give them a one-page printout at the end of their options so they really liked that and so those, those the numbers you 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 said were just extraordinary numbers in terms of a, a much higher prices. What might what would you is there anything in particular that you would put that down to? Is it is it the the preparation you said in terms of the, the asking the right questions? Is it the the process of using the software? Is it a confidence issue? What do you think we if you if you were to say what's the one thing that helps you get those results? What would it be? If I had to pick one thing, I, I would say one and a half, but if I had to pick one thing, honestly, it's the software. The, the flexibility to be able to customize the models to whatever we want to ask and whatever type of answer we want to have and whatever type of multiplier we want to use to calculate the price for that question. I mean, the level of customization that's available in the program is incredible. Um, and a hundred percent, that's what I would attribute my recent successes to. The confidence part, of course, comes from your teachings. I, I don't think that part comes from the software. So that would be, if I was allowed one and a half things instead of one, the, the increased confidence from what I learned from you is a very close second. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so. I, I, I know because you're using the software that you you are into the idea of giving people choices and and, and packages uh, and you just mentioned about people choosing the premium and you're gonna you had a, something to say about that so talk about talk about giving people choices and packages and and why are they chosen the choosing the premium <laughs> yeah so this is something that I had been working on um, as I'd mentioned before even when I was hourly people were always saying yes my closure rate was close to 90%. I was never getting resistance. And so even when I started using effective pricing and I'm charging much higher rates than what I used to, as those I told you with those numbers, people were still always choosing the premium package. Client number one and client number two with the software immediately chose the premium package. As soon as I went through my menus, and explained all the differences to them and then revealed and said, you know, which one are you leaning towards or whatever. They were always leaning towards premium. And when I revealed the price, they didn't hesitate at all. Um, client number three that I used the software for, I went in with a very purposeful intention that I wanted my premium price to be so ridiculously high that he would hesitate. I wanted that hesitation from him. And I was fully prepared to lose him as a client because my prices were so high. So I went into my settings for that particular model and I increased my base price ridiculously high. And I did get that hesitation from him this time, Mark. So I felt really good about that. I walked, he asked me for 24 hours to think about it. And I walked away from that meeting feeling good because I had accomplished what my goal was. My goal was to get resistance. And he got back to me uh, less than 24 hours later and said, you know, he was really looking forward to working with me and he would be pleased to choose the premium package. That was his exact wording. I'm pleased to choose your premium package. And I thought, geez, next time I have to push the limits even more. Yeah, wow. Uh, so, so when they're choosing the premium package, what do you think is the reason the, the reason for that? Is it is it because you uh, is it the way that you are articulating the value of that? Is it something specific that you're building into the premium that people seem to love to do? Is it a case of you thinking, well, perhaps actually my price should be higher still? Um, what, what what do you think is the reason they choose the premium? Uh I'll tell you what I think it is, and, and I don't know if you would agree. Um, number one, well, the first part I know you'll agree with because you teach it, and it's about the anchoring. I think it has to do with how I introduce what 
gold, silver, bronze is. And I use the little tooltip box that you have where I can put a definition. And so my basic package, I have a description that I verbally expand on when I'm explaining to them. And I say, this is very much a do-it-yourself type of package. These are the options that you're going to get with it. I'm going to come in quarterly or annually or whatever and just double check your work. I'm not really doing anything for you. So that's my basic package. I mean, in a nutshell, there is a little bit more that I do. My middle package, I explain to them in that little tooltip that this would be equivalent to having a part-time bookkeeper one day a week, a few hours a month. They're going to do some of the work. I'm going to do some of the work. Um, but there's just not as much benefit available to them. My premium package, I really sell it in that little description box as it's equivalent to having a full-time bookkeeper at your beck and call, but I do talk about my boundaries with hours. So, but it's support, it's questions included when you have a question. It's like having me sitting at a desk beside you Monday to Friday to be there to do everything bookkeeping related that you need. And when I do that, I say that that's equivalent, like the, the price in my area for a full-time certified bookkeeper is around 75 to 90,000 a year by the time you factor in payroll burden and vacation and everything. And, um, and I use that as an anchor before I reveal my price. And so I think that's why everybody chooses my premium package because of how I sell it. Well, you're clearly doing an, an incredibly good job and have learned so much and, and doing so much in a short space of time. I, Kim, I, I'd, I, we could carry on talking forever, but I, because <laughs> it sounds like you're doing some amazing things. But I also know, Kim, that uh, you've ag agreed that you will do some training sessions in the academy which is awesome yeah. so people so people can find out more so yes yeah, so I'm, I'm excited by that and, and I, I think that uh, that you are as well it's going to be it's going to be great so given there's going to be more opportunities to learn more stuff uh, and to be respectful respectful for your time for sharing so much now i've got just a couple of questions left so the penultimate question is uh, you've obviously had some some great results, those ones that you've shared and, and used in the effective pricing. But if you were to think about your kind of the, the, the journey that you've been through over the last uh, f months, years, how would you kind of sum it, it, it all up? What's the what's the big impact on uh, on you, either in terms of numbers, where your firm is now compared to where it was, or, or you from an emotional point of view? What's kind of the big benefit of going through this pricing journey? The biggest benefit, Mark, is I feel passionate about my business again. I got into this line of work because I love math. I love numbers. I used to tutor math in high school. It's what I went to university for. I ended up spending 20 years of my professional career in a different industry. But during that time, I kept doing night courses every once in a while and going back to school. I, it was just always where my heart was. And I had that passion when I first opened my business and I lost it when I was underpricing myself. I felt resentful of my clients and my time and going through this pricing journey has given me my passion back. I love my job again. I love my clients, especially the new ones that are paying me what I'm worth. Um, so that's been the biggest thing for me. Wow, I love that so much. I've got my passion back. That's just, uh, and, and it's, it just comes across that. So, so my final question for you, for the benefit of people watching, if you could share three, three tips with people, what would those three things be? Um, number one is that your pricing, we call it a journey for a reason. It's never going to be perfect. It's always evolving. I, I like to sort of compare it to a baby when you start who maybe grows into a troublesome teenager when you work out the kinks and then becomes, you know, a fully functioning adult. But even as adults, we all still crave attention. We all still need people to do things for us. So you always have to be touching your pricing and staying involved with it and helping it grow and helping it mature. So that was number one. Don't ever expect it to be perfect before you're ready to start making the changes and just always nurture it. Always um, continue on your journey. Life is a journey. Unexpected things happen. Different scenarios pop up. 
Same thing's going to happen with our pricing. Um, you know, we, scope creep might commit. Anything can happen. It's a journey for a reason. Um, number two would be that my confidence has increased tenfold and shot through the roof. Is it where I would like it to be? Heck no. Do I still feel like an imposter sometimes? I sure do. And but really these new clients that I've gotten through my effective pricing journey and my value pricing journey, they make me feel warm and fuzzy. I feel valued and appreciated from them. So that also helps increase my confidence. And I think the last thing is you're not alone. A lot of times you may feel like you're encountering a situation that none of us have ever happened before. You of course have uh, your Facebook groups and this huge community that you've built. And I'm in a lot of different accounting Facebook groups and yours is one of the most responsive. I've never seen somebody post a question and not have somebody offer feedback or advice. So there are so many of us out there that that was the thing I really learned that there's a lot of questions when you move to value pricing. And, uh, and I very quickly realized that the community that you've built surrounds us in a way that I hadn't felt in any other groups. So just knowing that I'm not alone is, is my biggest learning point. Wow, thank you so much for that, that feedback. Uh, I, I really appreciate that, Kim. Uh, and, thank you, and thank you, Kim, for, for sharing so much amazing stuff and being um, so free of your time, sharing great tips and, and helping other people that will be learning and being inspired by this. So it's been a joy to talk to you, Kim. You as well, Mark, and, and I look forward to hearing you much more in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye for now. Right. Bye. I absolutely loved it when she said, I've got my passion back. Uh, that's extraordinary. And, and those numbers were extraordinary. If you found this uh, valuable, please, of course, hit that like button, that thumbs up. And if you have any questions, stick them in the comments box. And if you're not yet subscribed, uh, please do that. And finally, Kim mentioned, obviously, a lot of the, her success, she said, was down to the effective pricing software. And so we'll put a link below. You can check that out. If you've never, ever seen the software before, never used it, go and explore the website. Uh, I run a session most Fridays where I do some training and answer questions. And many of those you'll find on the YouTube channel, uh, the videos that we've done recently. And also, one of the things that if you're, if you're interested is Kim's actually offered to help other people get up and running. Obviously, she'll charge a fee for that, but if you want to if you want Kim to help you, she can do exactly that and, and help you get up and running. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video and we'll probably suggest some other similar videos that you might want to watch next. Okay, bye for now.